This is a section to a fountain pen that I'm working on. You can see I've already cut the uh, threads uh, where it screws into the barrel. I've also bored it and threaded it internally for the uh, the nib carrier. I'll show you. Like that. Now what I'm doing is I've got it screwed into a jig in my lathe, a little arbor, threaded arbor. And I'm turning the OD and uh, I'll taper it down. So keep watching. doing now is freehand tapering the section. get in here close you'll probably be able to see the taper after this I'll sand it and be ready to move on to the next part all right what I'm doing now is blocking out a lot of the major components for this pin uh, this of course is the section and it's essentially finished except for the final buffing so it's the size and shape you can see the taper in it right here uh, and everything fits. I've got a converter mounted on it. This is the major part of the barrel. This is the front part of the barrel. This pin's going to have a metal sleeve somewhere over the barrel and this will all lock it in together. Uh, this is the part where the section screws in. It will have uh, double lead threads up here for the cap. This all goes together like this. Uh, a lot more work to do to them so far. Uh, it's just blocking it in. This will be the cap. Cap top screw will go into here, secure the clip, and this will go on here like this. Actually right about there. So those are the major components uh, for this pin. At this point I'm going to make a uh, stainless steel connector to hold the, the front and rear portions of the barrel together with the metal sleeve in between. Um, this is stainless steel. It's already been bored. This will clear the uh, uh, the converter and uh, it's 3 eighths of an inch in diameter. I'm going to set it up to make uh, 340 threads the full length of it. I'm going to make this about 3 quarters of an inch long. So I'm setting my uh, travel indicator here. the other end of it. This is the far end and I'm cutting a thread relief in it.
I'm using my uh, 3 8 40 arbor as a gauge for this. Screws on nice and neat. Fairly close fit on this. And double check with my barrel, which is already threaded. I single point threaded the uh, barrel as well. I'm going to take a little bit more off. This is the barrel. This is what the uh, coupler goes into. About halfway into this and then part way into the uh, other part, the front of the barrel. All I'll do now is uh, part it off. It'll give me a nice, uh, nice stainless steel coupler. Here's my coupler. I'll check it up, put it in my uh, arbor over here, and dress off that end there. Open up the hole and make sure everything's cleared and deburred, and it'll be ready to go. I have checked up in my lathe a piece of Damascus steel. See some of the pattern just from a light wash. Um, I've drilled it and I'm getting ready to bore it so that it can be mounted over the barrel. And part of the other end will wind up being the uh, uh, cat band, the small cat band. So, Set my depth about one and three eighths of an inch. Two seventy five, three eighths. Now, touch off. Stop the drill short. There we go. The tool I'm using is a miniature boring bar. This is solid carbide uh, for rigidity, and even at that, it's not overly rigid. It's easy to deflect. And then I've got these tiny uh, indexable carbide inserts for cutters. cut. I'm going to feed it manually. Okay. What I'm doing here is uh, on the other end of my Damascus bar stock that I'm, I've uh, roughed in my uh, barrel sleeve for, I uh, have just enough to make a good size cap band here. And I uh, kind of gouged it out there so I'll know about where to cut it off and how much to deal with here in a few minutes after I've uh, made this uh, cat band. So what I'm doing is I've got about four, a little over four hundred thousandths uh, to play with. I want to leave a lip on the end of it as it goes over the end of the, uh, the cap itself. So I'm going to make uh, the bore about 380 thousandths deep, and I'll plan on about a 20 thousandths lip. 20 to 25 thousandths. So, I'm going to come up here. There's my face, and you can see that I've set my indicator on zero. And now I'll start boring. I want to take it out to about 555 thousandths uh, on the inside diameter. I'm just going to feed it in manually. I'm 
double check it before I go too far. Okay. About two seven or uh, five seventeen right now. So got a little bit to go. Telescoping gauge and a micrometer to gauge it. Five thirty-four. Got about twenty thousand to go. So I'll do that in two cups. This should be the size. Around five fifty-seven, five fifty-eight. And if you can read a micrometer, it's showing about 556 and half a thousand. We'll call it 557. Gives me a little clearance. My target on the um, cap is to make this part of it about 555, 554. And that'll give me enough room for the uh, epoxy to bond it up. Next step will be to uh, turn the O2. This is my highly specialized part-off tool, my Stanley hacksaw. Don't have a lot of material to waste on a regular part-off tool, so I've got a uh, groove started here. Carefully cut it off. Uh, you can see that I've uh, sawn off the, uh, the cat band. What I've got to do is dress this down and cut the uh, barrel sleeve to its proper length. So I'm going to take the first cut off of it just to get a length for reference. bore on this is one and three eighths deep, 1.375. So I want about another 30 to 40 thousandths on it. Uh, exactly how much doesn't matter as long as I've got a lip on it to catch it. So I've got 10, 20, 30, a little over 40 thousandths lip on it. And I like that. So that's where I'm going to leave it, just like that. Now on the cab band. It's pretty thin walled, not quite 25 thousandths thick on the walls. You can see the uh, lip down at the bottom. I'm going to chuck on that. Carefully. So I don't squish it too much. Very thin lip on that. Let's see. Took it 380 deep. So that's looks like about 21 thousandths lip on it. And that'll just just hang over the edge of the cap. And I'll deburr it and leave it as it is. I'm going to turn the barrel down to allow for the uh, Damascus barrel sleeve to fit over it. I've got it screwed up on my mandrel, supported on the tail end with a uh, live center. Uh, I've got a, almost a quarter inch to uh, turn off the diameter to get it down to where I need it. So it's going to be kind of noisy. <laughs>
That was just over a hundred thousandths. It's pretty easy for uh, uh, plastic on this little lathe. All right, made a cut. Sand it off the fuzzies. Looks like right at 500 thousandths. And here's the sleeve. And it fits. So I'm gonna put all the parts together. A coupler going in here. And the sleeve and the barrel front. Snug it up. That goes together section with its converter goes in there and there's the makings of a pen. What I'll do next is play with this a little bit on the lathe but not much. I need It's way too heavy walled at this point. Um, I'm not going to turn down the blind cap in to, for the cap to post until after I've made the cap. Um, do have to make the cap, bore it for the section with a step in there to seal off the nib area. And then I'll uh, have to change some gears back here so that I can cut these double lead threads here and then mate them up on the cap. Those will be the next steps. Okay, here I'm making the cap top screw uh, out of the same plastic as the, uh, the pin's body. It will be counterboard on the outside and I'll make a cabochon of uh, Damascus steel and, and uh, bond it in there. Uh, turned the um, piece down to 3 eighths of an inch and I'm getting ready to single point thread it here. So. smooth the threads in the plastic. See how close I am. Excuse me. There you go. All right, I'm getting ready to uh, make my double lead threads on the front of the barrel uh, for coupling with uh, the cap. I've got the machine set on 14 threads per inch and the way this particular thing works it'll make a double lead so it'll have a 28 lead, uh, thread uh, profile. So I'm all set up and ready to go.
Now if you look, see if you can get this in here. Can you see the the cut? Mm -hmm. All right. Now let me make it on the secondary lead. Make the same thing. I'll show you a double lead. See how it splits the lead. It'll be more apparent as I get the threads fully cut. I've uh, drilled and bored the cap to uh, all the dimensions it needs. The uh, section with the nib in place fits up into there just enough clearance to make a good fit without being too loose or too tight. So now I'm getting ready to thread the cap to mate to this part of the barrel. take a while but I have to do one lead at a time internally and uh, have to get close and then make light cuts and fit by trial and error. All right I've threaded it. I have a nice fit. And it has one and a quarter turns to disengage which is about what I want and it is a double lead so the next step everything fits just fine what I'm going to do is uh, take the section out use some of course it may be too cold to get any of this stuff out of here but uh, I'm going to lap the threads together, make them a little bit smoother with plastic polish. Screw it all the way down. Of course, it turns in farther without the section. And work it back and forth like this. Actually, it might be better if I just pull everything out. And when I do this, I'll pull them apart as I, as I lap, and then I'll push them together as I lap, and that gets both sides of the thread, the V-thread in there. Okay. Right now my cap is completely finished internally. The length, uh, all I'm going to do is turn it to size and shape. Right now it's at 5 8 just, just over 5 8 at uh, 0.626. My target is about 0.55, and that'll fit the uh, cat band over it and gives me room to sculpt the open end, the top end of it. Still large enough to give support and uh, mechanical support as well as a visual uh, looks without being too bulky or too skinny. So I'm going to take a cut and get a bunch of this off. I'm going to use power feed for everyone.
Let's see what I've got. Okay, I'm at 592. And so I'll keep cutting until I get down to uh, just oversize of my target, and then I'll sand it to size. Here's my cat band, roughed in. The bore of the cat band is 0.556, which I wrote down over there. So I need to turn the cap to that size or maybe a thousand smaller and then sand it and I need I need space in here uh, so it'll be a good slip fit so that there is actual epoxy in there you can't have epoxy that's under a thousandth of an inch thick and expect it to hold so I made my final pass and I'm showing just under 556 for those of you who can read a micrometer Slips up on it, and I can force it, which I don't want to do. Right now, it's about halfway, almost halfway up on there. So I've still got tool marks on here. It's not smooth. So by the time I smooth it down, it should fit nicely. Done. Because I've zeroed my dial here, and I'm going to engage the power feed, but I want to taper this cap. I don't want it just to be a straight cap. So from here, I'm going to go to right about there, I'm feeding in. Now, if you look down here, you can see that I've tapered it in. Actually, about 70 to 75 thousandths by my dial, smaller in diameter up at the uh, top end than down here. But it's a nice, even uh, taper. And it'll true up and even up, level out when I start sanding it here in a few minutes. All right, I'm going to start sanding. What I've done is I've inked the cap with uh, just a regular Sharpie magic marker type uh, marker. Um, I'm going to briefly hit it with 320 grit just to level this out because it, it'll have some wave in it. I want to level it out. Uh, for a backup, I'll use different things. Probably one of my favorites is just an old pink eraser. Uh, a little bit forgiving, a little bit firm. They work real well for plastic. I also put a newspaper down here just to keep excess water off the ways on my lathe so they don't rust. So. I don't want to take too much off with this 320 because it gets kind of aggressive. Especially up in the area here where I've got to have good size control. One of the things you have to be careful of is to concentrate and not let yourself get terribly distracted. All right. Now you can see I've got the tool marks for my cutting tool pretty much out with the 320. Didn't really do much up here because I don't want to undercut that up there. So next grit is 400. I'm using 3M silicon carbide automotive wet dry papers. They're the ones that I found the best. Um, I don't play with micro mesh anymore. I don't like other brands because 3M is extremely consistent and other brands are iffy. So here we go with 400 grit and I'm going to ink it. 
so I can see what I'm doing. And for a lubricant, I'm just using water. I had been known to put a couple of drops of liquid dish soap in here. Sometimes I think it helps, sometimes I don't know. Notice that I keep it moving back and forth. I'm not, I'm trying to overlap my uh, sanding strokes. I'm also running the lathe at about a thousand RPMs here. All right. Now I want to see what my uh, cat band does. I may have to sand a little bit more. A little snug. I need to. I need to remove a little more plastic from down here, which I'll do with the same 400 grit. After the 400 grit, you can see see how the strokes are diagonal. They go back and forth. When I go to the next grit, which will be 600, I'll I'll be more aggressive with my back and forth movement. And then once I uh, have sanded it with a 600 grit. I'll actually come back and with the lathe off and run it lengthwise, just turning it slowly just so I go all the way around. But I'll sand it lengthwise, and that way I know I'm getting all the previous grits scratch marks out. All right, this is a cap top screw in uh, my threaded arbor. I've turned the outside diameter to the same as up here, the cap top, uh, the top of the cap. And uh, now I'm going to dress it up. I'd thought about counterboring it and inserting a button of Damascus, but I've decided against it because it's small in diameter. And it just it would be a waste of Damascus trying to get something with a fine enough pattern to show. So I'm going to dress this up. <laughs> I'm just using a smooth cut file to uh, shape it. If it comes straight on here, you should be able to see the shape. to do is uh, smooth it up with sandpaper and we'll be ready to polish it the rest of the time. Turn the blind cap end of the uh, of the barrel here so that the cap will post on it. This is an area that has to be done completely freehand and uh, I have uh, messed up a couple of barrels before and had to make new new parts or new blind caps uh, in other cases and so it's kind of a trial and error thing. Anyway, that's what I'm gonna do, so watch. side of the threads is about 460 so the threads actually slip up over the blind cap 
little more to cut off. Getting close. Let's see how it fits. Ooh. All right, I want it to come up a little higher. a little bit more off. All right, I've skimmed this just a little bit more and we're going to see how it fits. I've got the uh, camp band sitting on here because that's all part of the deal here. There we go. Now it'll scoot up a little bit more when I uh, uh, finish sanding it but that's a good starting point. Okay, barrel band, cap band, and I've just got them on my wooden mandrels here, and I'm going to smooth them up on my bell grinder. That's with a 120 grit. I'll go through 240, 320, and up. Get them uh, pretty smooth, and then I'll start laying them out for carving. I've smoothed up the Damascus and thrown it in some uh, etchant so I can see where my pattern is, and I'll use those to uh, do my layout. This is the uh, paper pattern of the design that I made for the barrel sleeve. Uh, it does wrap all the way around. I meet at the back. And I don't know if you can see it, but I've done a basic layout of that design on the uh, Damascus sleeve. So next step, after I've done, since I've done this, is I'll hog off lots of this excess material and get it out of the way and I'll come in here and pierce the other negative spaces in here and here and then I'll start uh, refining it with files and uh, burrs and other uh, tools.
Now what are you doing? Well, just using files to do all the uh, shaping now that I've hogged most of it off with the uh, rotary tool and various cutters. I've got a line around here. I'm going to make an upper border and I need to bring the cutout areas to that line. See it right there? Barely see it there, but it's there. Here it is, pretty much carved all the shape and size. What I need to do now is start sanding it. So I'll trim all the edges and bring them up to uh, a good finish and then I'll come back and do whatever I need to do to the outside. These are the starts of some cuts. Now, now that I've got a groove going, I'll uh, come back and define them with uh, my vast array of files. Here I've uh, carved my uh, cat band, left an element that is uh, complementary to what's on the uh, barrel band. See, I've given it some sweeping curves around there. So uh, at this point, I'm sanding it, smoothing it up, getting the uh, tool marks out of it from the files. Okay. Uh, I'm using this particular piece of uh, steel for the uh, clip. It is Delbert Ely's uh, T-Rex pattern. Uh, which is nickel and two different steels, so it should have some uh, nice shades in it. And you can see, hopefully, the uh, shape that I've drawn on it. So I'll be uh, putting a slot on the back side for the spring washer mount and then start carving it up. This is my clip bar. You can see that I've already shaped it. And I started roughing it in. This is, this is the amount of carving on it, is this cut here. Roughed it in with a cutoff disc. All right now, I'm using a ball shaped diamond burr to uh, clean it up some and define it. Then, once I've done that, because it won't be level, it'll still be bumpy, I'll come in and refine it with this uh, bent riffler file that's, uh, that's round. It's like a bent rat tail. So. Nothing like working for days and days to get a pen done with a deadline and then messing it up. I had a uh, funny spot down here on the lower end. It looked like my buffing wheel scorched a, a stripe across it. So as I was re-sanding it, I broke the upper part. Totally cratered about 200 thousandths in length. So I get to make a whole new barrel. Yes, I'm aggravated. All right. I have the new barrel with the coupler already uh, super glued into it just to hold it in position. And it's time to buff it. the plastic I either have um, tool marks that run around it or in some cases lengthwise that'll be my last uh, sanding strokes would just be lengthwise 
I'll come in here and buff it at an angle. Then I'll change the angle to the other direction. Then I examine it carefully to make sure there are no uh, tool marks, that I've buffed out all of the tool marks. Then once it's, once it's uh, good and clean, I'll carefully buff it lengthwise because any, any scratching left from the buffing uh, pretty much disappears when you run it lengthwise. If you're doing it on the bias or if you're doing it around, it'll show up. All right, now I'm getting ready to put the finishing touches on the pen. I have to assemble my clip. Um, it's made so that it'll screw together. So I've got a screw, number 256 button head, uh, chucked in my uh, lathe here. And I'm going to turn the outside diameter, true it up, and then get rid of the Torx driver. <laughs> Typical of many of my clips. Here are the three components for the clip. The washer spring mount, the clip bar, and the screw. piece of uh, masking tape on here to protect the finish on the cap. Looks like I got a proper preload on the spring. We go. Stay tuned. She'll have finished pictures.
Yeah. <laughs> You're supposed to say action. Must have my glasses on, lest anyone fuss at me for no safety glasses. I can't run the machine with your boobs pushed up against my back, okay? <laughs> or are you kissing me? <laughs> the video is running. It is. <laughs> Go. <laughs> Watch the tongue, baby. 